Having goals is a great way to motivate yourself to make a change, but the way you approach goal setting can make a big difference in your overall well-being. My name is Amanda Morris, and I'm a disability reporter for the Washington Post's well-being section. I'm also a hard of hearing woman and the daughter of two deaf parents. During my reporting in disability spaces, I've learned a lot about taking a self-compassion approach to goal setting, and I want to share some of these insights from the disability community with you. Sometimes we find ourselves caught up in hustle culture. If you find yourself getting stressed out or not sleeping enough because you have too many things to do and not enough time to do them, or you feel like a failure because you're not reaching your goals, then you might be setting goals that are bad for your overall emotional, mental, and physical well-being. It's hard to recognize when we're overdoing it. In a society that so often encourages us to be as productive as possible, we may internalize the idea that we should just push through it when we feel tired, stressed, or overwhelmed. But some disabled people have told me that pushing through it can be dangerous. For them, pushing past their limits can result in physical consequences that lead to increased pain or hospital visits. And because of that, they've developed healthier ways to approach their goals. Let's talk about knowing your limits. Everyone's bodies are different, and we all have unique capabilities and limits. You might have a friend who's able to do more than you, and that's okay. Many people with chronic illness or chronic fatigue talk about their daily energy in terms of spoons. Every day, you have a certain amount of spoons that you can use to get things done. For some people, taking a shower may only require one spoon, but for others, that same task could require three spoons. If someone with a chronic condition runs out of spoons, they risk endangering their health. If a non-disabled person runs out of spoons and pushes past their healthy limits, they may experience extreme stress, exhaustion, or may feel drained. But we don't have to feel that way all the time. Recognizing where your limits are can be empowering because it can help you restore balance in your life by saying no to things that you don't have the time, energy, or resources for. It can also help you set boundaries and prioritize the things that are most important to you. Now let's talk about how to set better goals. When you're setting a personal goal for yourself, focus on how you wanna feel, not on what you wanna do. Write down a few key emotions that you wanna strengthen right now. Maybe you wanna feel more connected to your family or you wanna laugh more often. Then for each emotion, write down a few ways that you can enhance those feelings. The more positive feelings you can create for yourself, the better your overall emotional and mental well-being will be. You might have heard of SMART goals. The letters in SMART stand for goals that are specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound. A SMART goal might sound like this. This summer, I want to go to the gym at least three times a week for about an hour. But the problem with setting this kind of goal is that life is often unpredictable and chaotic. And our bodies can be unpredictable and chaotic. On some days, you might have more energy. On others, you might have less. So instead of SMART goals, try using this method created by Emily Ledow, an author and disability rights activist. She uses FUN goals, which stands for goals that are flexible, uplifting, and numberless. A FUN goal might sound like this. I want to move in a way that feels good more often. For me, that means dancing as much as I can. Once you've set your goal, make sure you listen to your body. Pay attention to signs of overdoing it. These could include suddenly feeling irritable, having headaches, trouble sleeping, an upset stomach, or maybe you have difficulty concentrating or you just feel sluggish. If you're overdoing it, try to find ways to cut back and let go of the pressure to be hyper productive. You can't always control whether or not you succeed, but you can make a plan for how you get back on track. Maybe that means asking for more time on a project or it could mean setting up a support system to help you. Accepting that failure is often part of the process and planning to overcome it is a part of your journey to be more successful in the long run. And finally, remember, you're the one who's at the goal. If it doesn't feel good, you can always quit. In some cases, doing less might actually do more for your well-being. <laughs>